Day two of voting in Russia's three-day presidential vote is underway. The election is expected to formalize six more years of rule by President Vladimir Putin, who faces no real challenges. Few international observers have been permitted to oversee the election, but Putin remains very popular, and some voters don't mind making a great effort to reach polling stations. A convoy of sleighs crosses the frozen tundra of Russia's remote northeast. They have traveled hundreds of kilometers to cast their votes in Russia's presidential election. We came from the distant tundra to make our choice. Every voice of every person in our great country from east to west is important. After a brutal crackdown on political opposition, President Vladimir Putin is almost certain to extend his rule by another six years. In Moscow, thousands of kilometers to the west, many say they are voting for stability and prosperity. We expect the one and only, the best Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin to continue his path. Stability will only come with the person who rules now, because he will make these changes. And with many of Putin's most powerful opponents either in prison, exile or dead, the election offers no meaningful alternatives. It's a propaganda machine designed to make people think as directed. They do a good job, and we're seeing the results. Despite the Kremlin's crackdown on dissent, some have risked imprisonment to make their true feelings known. Russia's opposition movement has also urged supporters to gather at polling stations at noon on Sunday as a form of mass protest. But regardless of how many heed the call, the outcome of this year's election is all but certain. Well, ever since Russian authorities shut down our office in Moscow, our bureau chief Yuri Rosheto has been reporting from Riga. Yuri, how's this presidential election different from previous ones? Well, Ben, the Central Election Commission has reported that more than 50% of Russians entitled to vote have now done so. Uh, according to media reports, the Kremlin has set a target of, of up to 80% for Putin's fifth term in office, 80% turnout. Overall, this Putin election is proceeding without any major incidents, apart from the generally rather threatening situation, at least in Central Russia. And that, of course, is completely new. Uh, there has been been heavy shelling all day in the border town of Belgorod. Uh, several people have been uh, seriously injured and two killed. Uh, the border region has uh, been under fire from Ukraine for days. Uh, uh, there was also an explosion at an oil refinery in Samara, apparently as a result of a drone attack. 80% uh, turnout would be optimistic, uh, especially considering uh, we've had calls from, say, the, the widow of opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, uh, for silent protests at polling stations tomorrow. A any mention of that in the Russian media? No, that's, that's not at all. Uh, Navalny has, by the way, repeatedly come up uh, in his lifetime with various uh, ideas, let's call it that way, to get Putin out of office. Uh, once he called Russians to vote for everyone except the ruling party, this time, you said it, uh, Russians were supposed to show up outside the polling stations at noon tomorrow, on the last day on voting, um, as a protest against Putin's policies. Um, but. Uh, at the end of the day, his tactics or his ideas, all the creative, were ultimately without major effect as the Kremlin managed to take the lead time and time again. Uh, well, we'll see how it turns out tomorrow. Uh, the police have warned that participation in this protest could be punished with prison, which is bizarre because on the one hand, the Kremlin wants as many Russians as possible to come to the polling stations to vote. And on the other hand, those who show up at the polling stations tomorrow at noon should be punished. Um, in this sense, yes, Navalny is, let's say, dictating his will to the authorities and at least confusing or irritating them. Uh, Yuri, what is it about Vladimir Putin that many Russians find so impressive? Well, uh, 
to understand the Russians' uh, impression or sympathy towards Putin, uh, you have to look back to the uh, 1990s. Uh, back then, the Russian economy was dying, uh, but crime was on the rise. I, I very well remember these times. Uh, those times, I was a young stud student in Russia. Uh, people had little in their pockets um, and lots of fear in their eyes, uh, fear of the future. And then President Yeltsin was an alcoholic and ill. Russia was a let's say, mafia state, then came Putin. He was chosen by the liberal part of Yeltsin's political advisors, young, sporty, and completely different type. And at the beginning, he pretended to be even a liberal politician. Uh, but that was only one role he had to play and to gather sympathy, especially in the West, and not for long. And on the other hand, within Russia, he very quickly showed his iron hand and yeah, began to build a strong state, creating stability and prosperity for the Russians, thanks to also high gas and oil prices. Uh, the fact that this stability is over or almost over now, we see the shelling today uh, in Belgorod with the Putin's war in Ukraine. Uh, this uh, fact could be his political disaster in the upcoming six years of his ruling. Very interesting analysis there from our man in Riga, Yuri Rosheto. Thank you.